Hello classmates, today I'm going to talk about topic 3, the achievement of kingdoms of Southeast Asia. Majapahit, Kunan, and Sri Vijaya. What are they? These are my team members. I am the leader and my group members are Rivan, Eve, Hanyang, Gilles, and Keith. Farmers in ancient kingdoms grew rice and other crops, which they used for trade. The growing of crops allowed ancient kingdoms in Southeast Asia to become prosperous. Southeast Asia grew, grew rich and powerful from trade carried out along the maritime trade route as well as from the growing of rice. The importance of trade and agriculture continues today. Before we talk about the ancient kingdoms, we will show you a video about the developed countries in Southeast Asia. We will now talk about the ancient kingdoms. The first, the first ancient kingdom we will talk about is Funan. According to the written history, Funan was the first major kingdom of the region. Funan was a major trading port in Southeast Asia. One of the most earliest kingdoms historically recorded in Southeast Asia was the kingdom of Funan. Funan prospered primarily as a maritime trading center for many years. Funan became the most important kingdom because of its ideal location as a major shipping port. Traders in search of luxury goods such as silk and jade become traveling from India to China through Southeast Asia in the first century. Hence, the busy maritime routes between India and China contributed to the growth of Hunan Empire. The achievement of Hunan. Some of the earliest written records about Hunan were by Chinese travelers. They described people of Hunan kingdoms eat with utensils made of silver. Taxes were paid with in gold, silver, pearls, and perfumes. The Hunan people were described as living in raised houses with bamboo leaves covering their homes. Now I will end my Shibidaya grew and became a trading center as it was a convenient port for traders along the Chinese maritime trade route. The people in Shibidaya Kingdom made golden vessels that were shaped like lotus flowers. The kingdom of Shibidaya prospered during the 7th century to 13th century. Shibidaya grew as a trading center. The wealth from trade allowed the kingdom of Shibidaya to grow and develop. Traders bought porcelain, jade, and silk from China. Camphor, sandalwood, spices, and resins from the Molokas Islands and textiles from India. The children of Sri during the ceremonial fest, the people Sri Vidaya used golden vessels shaped like lotus flowers. The world became well known as a local specialty, and as late as 1082, Chinese records showed that Sri Vidaya envoys brought golden lotus bowls filled with pearls and other precious objects as gifts for the Emperor of China. Now I'll pass my turn to you. The Majapahit Kingdom reached its peak in the 14th century, controlling most of the present-day Indonesia and southern parts of the Malay Peninsula. The Majapahit Kingdom 
became a powerful kingdom in east of Java in the 14th century under the leadership of Prime Minister Gajah Mada. It was the last great Hindu kingdom in Southeast Asia. By early 16th century, with the rise of Malacca Kingdom, the Majapahit Kingdom began to decline in power. The fertile land along Prantas River, the longest river in East Java, also made rice cultivation a major source of income for the kingdom. The village of Trowulan in the present day of East Java occupies much of the site of, of the former capital of the Majapahit Kingdom. Trowulan is about 60 kilometers away from Surabaya, which continues to be the main seaport and commercial center in eastern Java today. By the 13th, 1330s, the Majapahit kings had control over had control over all of eastern Java, including the spice produ producing island known as Molucas. Spices such as cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, and pepper were grown only in this part of Southeast Asia. As these spices were needed for cooking and for making medicine, many traders wanted to buy them. I will now pass my time to the rest. The Angkor is one of the most powerful kingdoms in mainland Southeast Asia. The people in Angkor Kingdom built as many temples. One of the most famous ones is Angkor Wat. Agriculture was a very important reason for the Angkor Kingdom prosperity. The people in Angkor Kingdom could ensure good harvest. The people in Angkor built huge water tanks to store water, access rainwater, which could be used when needed. This way, the kingdom could remain stable, as there was enough food for everyone. The rich Angkor built as many public buildings, including hospitals, schools, and libraries. People wrote on stone piles, leaves, and leather hides. Kings supported theatres, art and dance, reflecting values and stories, achievements. King Jayavarman built temples during his reign. For several centuries after Jayavarman, he was a duty of every criminal king to construct, construct massive temples that led to the construction of many great temples that became the glory of the Angkor Kingdom. The most well-known Angkor temple ID, the Angkor Wat. Built of sandstone and laterite, the complex forms a triangle. It is surrounded by moats almost 200 meters wide. Construction of this massive temple began during the reign of King Suryavarma. It took thousands of workers and more than 30 years to complete. Now I will pass my time to Hanyu. During the 15th century, Malacca controlled the whole Malay Peninsula as well as the eastern part of Sumatra. Parameswarawa, the founder of Malacca, he settled down in Malacca in the early 14th and later founded a new kingdom. Parameswara adopted Islam and was renamed in Skandar Shah. Malacca eventually became the main base for the spread of Islam in the archipelago. Many traders visited Malacca as was an important trading center in Southeast Asia. Some of these traders were Muslim and Islam was eventually spread from Malacca to the rest of the Malay Peninsula as it was the trading center in Java and Sumatra. By the late 15th century, Malacca's population was about 20,000, including 15,000 foreign merchants, some of whom married local women. Foreigners came from different countries like Arabia, China, and India. If you had lived in Malacca then, you would have heard at least 84 languages being spoken on the street. Malacca established ties with China in the early 14th as a way of protecting itself against other kingdoms in the region. From early as 1405, the king of Malacca sent officials to China presenting gifts. The protection from China helped Malacca become one of the most important trading ports in the region. I will now pass my time to Chakri. General Chakri founded the Chakri Kingdom in 1782. He was also known as King Rama when he was King of Siam, present day of Thailand. King 
Rama regained Sayadi's solidarities that had been lost. He also expanded the kingdom to cover all of mainland Southeast Asia, including the northern Malay states, except Burmese and Vietnamese territories. King Rama moved his capital to Bangkok, where it had remained since. He developed Bangkok into a major port. At the same time, he gathered talented officials officials and scholars to help strengthen the rule. King Rama made Thai culture popular, translating numerous literary and historical works. King Mongkut was the fourth king of the Chakri dynasty. He ruled as Rama IV from 1851 to 1868. He was the first Siamese king to study Western languages and idea. As a prince, Mongkut has had been a Buddhist monk, but he also tutored in English, Latin, astronomy, and mathematics. He was fluent in English language and recognized its value. He employed an English woman from Singapore to tutor his children. These are the contributions the ancient kingdoms had made and the countries in Southeast Asia had made. Thank you for your kind attention.